Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching and just all that stuff. I really appreciate it. Hope you're having an awesome day. Uh, I'm working on a photo. Actually, I'm working on five photos. And that's because in each photo, I'm going to demonstrate a different filter. And I'm in Luminar 3 with libraries. And this is applicable in Luminar Flex, also in Luminar 2018, because it's the same filter. So regardless of which version you have, you're set. You got them. Let's get into it. Um, I was going to call this video the five, you know, like the five best filters in Luminar, but they're not the best filters. They're the most versatile filters. Now they're really good filters, and some of them, in fact, in fact, one of them for sure, is probably the best filter in Luminar. Um, but I didn't want to call the video the five best because you know it's, it's subjective. Well, all this is subjective, I guess, because this is me making videos about stuff I want to make videos about uh, and sharing my opinions. But um, I didn't want to make it the best because to me, there's so many different aspects of editing a photo. Um, there's a video I did a long time ago called Light, Detail, and Color, and I talk about how I edit in Luminar. And I have a different workspace for editing, you know, adjusting the light, which I like to do first, and then uh, enhancing the details, which I like to do second, and then adjusting the colors, which I like to do third. To me, the light and the detail piece is like, it's almost like the structure of the photo. I'm trying to get a a, a, I'm trying to get that look in the way I want it to look before I make my color adjustments. And so that's why I'm not going to call this the five best filters because some of my favorite filters and what I consider the best filters in Luminar are for color only. They're really just color enhancement filters. And in fact, if you don't use other filters with them, you're probably not going to get a photo edited. Whereas these five, you can kind of do a pretty good job editing a photo um, or at least in four of these five filters, I think uh, you can do a pretty good job editing the photo with just one filter. So let's hop into it. And the first one is with this photo right here. And as you can see, it's a develop filter. Now what I did is um, I'm in my Luminar 3 library where I keep all my raw files, but I exported JPEGs and then I stuck them in the quick edits. So all of these are going to say uh, JPEG and that's simply because I like to edit JPEG in my videos. However, um, it's develop or raw develop. It has the same filters. Um, you know, that's the, uh, uh, whether you're using um, develop or raw develop. So the reason I think it's one of the most versatile is because if you look at it, I mean, there's so many different things you can do here. And what I thought I would do is just kind of walk through how I would edit this photo just using this filter. So I think we need a little bit of contrast. I think the, the temperature is off. It's way too kind of orangey gold for me. Um, I want to do a little bit of light adjustment here and add some clarity and something like that. I mean, let me show you where I started, right? Kind of blah, kind of orangey yellow, and now a little bit more muted color. Um, thanks to the temperature, I added some contrast. I could also, in fact, I might take the exposure down a little bit and then pull up maybe a little bit of the blacks and the shadows a little bit more and maybe a little bit more contrast. Um, just give it a little bit of mood, but the point is that you have a lot of versatility here. Um, and in fact, I haven't even gotten on to the lens uh, correction or the transform tabs here in the develop filter. So there's a lot that you can do, super capable. In fact, I should go to lens because I think I can do a little bit with lens distortion. And yeah, that's going to straighten those columns out. I don't know if you, if you look at the before and after, here's the before. It's bowing a little bit and here's the after, much straighter. So. That's why I think develop is one of the most versatile filters in Luminar. Let's hop into filter number two. Okay, filter two is structure. You can see it here. Here's a photo I took at Epcot in Florida a long time ago. And structure, you might be thinking, Jim, I mean, how is that versatile, man? You drag it to the right and you get some crunchy stuff and it's great for amping up, you know, the appearance of details and kind of crispness. Um, and it is, but as you've probably seen me do if you watch my videos and if you haven't, Hey, you're missing out. Watch my videos, people. Um, I'm kidding. Well, I'm not really kidding. I'd like you to watch them. Anyway, um, but if you go to the left with structure, it's versatile because you can reduce the impact of that and make the photo really smooth. So a photo like this, I would use the structure filter two times. So let me, in fact, let me just get it again because I'm going to use it twice. Uh, the first time, I'm just going to drag it to the right. And, to, you know, as what I, you know, based on what I said earlier, you can see the clouds, they're looking like that faux HDR. They're looking pretty bad. The water is too crispy, but I'm, I'm going to use a brush and I'm just going to brush the structure in to the building over here and the tree and the grass and, you know, on top of the little uh, spaceship Earth, I think it's called. Um, somebody here uh, lives in Florida will remember that. I think it's called Spaceship Earth. 
And let me show you my mask. All right, sloppy job, but we're all friends, so you're not gonna hold that against me, right? Right, okay, good. Um, so that, that's how you impact structure, but then you can do these kind of things where you go to the left and look at those clouds. Now, that's kind of overdoing it, but I'm making an example here. But if you look at the water and the clouds, they're very smooth and buttery, and you can go anywhere in here. So I might reduce a little bit, maybe a little softness, a little boost, and then come in here and brush it. Um, and in this case, I would just come in and brush it across the sky, hence the bigger brush, um, and then brush it against uh, or over the water as well. And again, sloppy job. I'm in a hurry just because, you know, I'm uh, recording this and uh, you're not here to see me try to get a mask accurately done. The other thing I could have done is copied the mask from the first filter, pasted it onto the second, and then inverted it. It would have been a lot quicker. So I wanted to mention that. So that's why I think structure is uh, one of also, that's why I've chosen as number two, is one of the most versatile filters in Luminar because you can add crunchy detail and at the same time soften up a photo and make it kind of smooth and yummy like I did here. Let me show you number three. Okay, filter number three is the tone filter. And if you watch any of my videos, you already know why. And that is because of Smart Tone. That slider is so freaking good. So good, I love it. Um, but the other great thing, I mean, you've got all these controls that are also very similar to what you have in the develop filter. I mean, you're lacking clarity and you don't have the lens distortion and all the transformation stuff, but you can do a lot with the photo. I mean, you can mess with contrast. Smart Tone does, does a fabulous job here. I can take down the highlights, bump up the shadows, maybe lift the blacks, put on the whites. I might even drop the exposure a tiny bit. And, you know, I took the photo from that to that. Hey, Jim, not a big difference. It's not really, but that's okay. Um, I could you know, lift Smart Tone to make it more of a difference. Um, but the point is, I think it's a really versatile tool because you have all these controls. You can control the light um, and uh, you know, really balance that out. And to me, that's the st first step, really. That's the, you know, to me, step one or the primary step to editing a photo is get the light kind of balanced. Get it looking the way you want it to look. Um, and, and I think Tone does an incredible job of that, especially with the Smart Tone slider, which is why that one's Number three on my list. Let me get another photo and we'll talk about number four. Okay, filter number four that I consider one of the most versatile in Luminar is the adjustable gradient filter. Love this filter, I just absolutely adore it. And I, I gotta be honest, I don't think I talk about it a lot or use it in a lot of my videos. It's in a number of my presets and uh, I just love it because if you look at it, you, you can separate the top from the bottom. It's the same sliders on either tab and you can do exposure, contrast, vibrance, and warmth. So you can increase the vibrance, which is kind of like, you know, bumping up the color intensity, um, and then you can change the warmth, right? Which is kind of a temperature adjustment, and then contrast and exposure is all about the light. Um, the cool thing is you can set the orientation. So you just click on the set orientation button, and you can say, all right, well, where do I want to basically put the, the dividing line between what the filter is gonna consider the top of the photo and what the filter is gonna consider at the bottom of the photo. So I'm gonna put it on my crooked horizon. Um, sorry about that. Hey, my photos are mostly crooked. Um, I, always, I always try to fix them. Um, sometimes I see that I post them and I'm like, ooh, gosh, I think that's a little crooked. But anyway, you're not here for that. You're here for this filter, I, I think. Um, and so let me show you what I would do here. So exposure, I might take that down a little bit, right? In the top, I might add a little bit of contrast, bump up the vibrance and that color starts coming to life. Maybe give a little warmth. After all, it was a sunset. And in the bottom, I might lift the exposure a little bit, drag that contrast a lot, but maybe a little bit more exposure. Um, again, more vibrance and quite a bit more warmth and something like that. So let me show you the before and the after. You can see that uh, the before sky, I mean, typical landscape, seascape in this case, but a landscape shot where you shoot a, a standard exposure and the source of the light, uh, obviously in the sky, that area of the photo is gonna be brighter and the foreground is gonna be darker. Not a huge difference here, but as you can see, a little bit darker in the foreground, a little bit lighter in the, um, you know, in the upper section of the photo, uh, but is able to overcome that. So again, before and after, and the slider, I think, is always a good way to do a compare. You can see the colors are popping. I think the, uh, the oranges and pinks look really good. The blues really come into life. Um, I wanna point something out, however, and that's not about this filter, it's about this entire exercise, and that is, I'm not saying, except really in the case of raw develop, I'm not saying, hey, you can just edit a photo entirely with one filter. 
if you've watched any of my videos, and I hope that you have, um, I use several filters usually, you know, four, five, six. I, I think I have, I think my most is like 15 or on one layer. Um, but, uh, you know, I've got multiple layers. I do a lot of stuff to my photos. So I'm not saying, hey, these five you can do without anything else, but I'm saying they're super versatile because they give you a lot of control over different aspects of the photo. So raw develop, you know, tone, a structure, adjustable gradient, lots of control, lots of power. You can go from there to there in just a, you know, a couple of minutes of work. Am I done with the photo? I'd probably go add structure and soften it up a little bit uh, with negative structure, which I showed you in that previous photo. Um, but, you know, I mean, I'm pretty done with the photo, to be honest, and that's effectively a one filter edit. Let me show you number five. Okay, number five is, uh, oddly enough, Accent AI, and that's Accent AI uh, 2.0. That's the newest one that's in Luminar 3. I have a video about it there if you want to check it out. But um, I always think of Accent AI as being kind of like Smart Tone, uh, like on steroids, right? But Smart Tone, to me, you drag it to the right, and it brightens a dark photo, but it mostly brightens the dark parts without brightening the stuff that's already bright. So it's smart, right? I, I, I've kind of always thought of Accent AI as, as being kind of like that, but in reality, it works really well on a blown out photo too. So um, you drag that thing all the way to the right. I had a blown out photo, and now I've got a, honestly, like a perfectly exposed photo. Nice contrast, nice color. I got back all the visibility in the sky. I mean, look at that. There's the before and there's the after. That, my friends, actually may be a one filter edit. And that's one of the reasons I think Accent AI is so versatile. Um, I typically, obviously you drag it to the right, you can only drag it to the right, but I typically add it to darker photos to brighten them and sort of brighten it up, bring it to life. And I might even use that as the first filter in a edit just to kind of get the light right before I start doing other things, other creative edits or detailed edits or whatever. But, um, you know, wow, like I wasn't really thinking about that, but I was playing with this photo and I thought, oh, I'll just try Accent AI to see how it works. I'm kind of a blown out photo. And hey, you know, maybe you've already done this, I haven't really. I always think of it, as I said, to use on darker photos to get me to a launching place, if you will. But wow, I mean, like on a blown out photo, there I am, right? One filter, just drag it all, all the way to the right at 100 on Accent AI 2.0, and I'm very happy. So super versatile, super powerful filter, works on the dark photos, works on the light photos as well. And those are my five, my friends. So that would be raw develop, structure, tone, adjustable gradient, and Accent AI 2.0. That's why I think these are the five most versatile filters in Luminar. Hope you enjoyed this, and if you have any questions, let me know. I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. Hit me up with any comments down below. I try to answer all of them. I don't know if I do, but I think I do. Um, and thanks for interacting with me. I have a lot of fun here on YouTube. I hope you have fun visiting me and my videos every week, and I'll be back more with, or no, wait, I'll be back soon with more. Thanks, friends. Have a great one. Take care. I'll see you soon, and Adios.